I'm undecided about these. Prove that the following languages are undecidable. Regular and Dolores. Before we get into what these languages are, let's recall the proof strategy for showing that a language is undecidable. So that strategy is going to be reductions. We've already seen reductions in action for showing that a language is decidable. Now we're just going to tweak that strategy a bit to show that a language is undecidable. So in order to show that a language is undecidable, you're going to start off with a language you already know to be undecidable and show that this language reduces to the language that you want to show is undecidable. In other words, you're going to create a decider Turing machine for the language you know is undecidable using a decider Turing machine for the language you want to show is undecidable. With this strategy in mind, let's get started and show that the language regular is undecidable. The language regular consists of the strings of encodings of Turing machines such that the language of that Turing machine is regular. So we've got to do this via reduction from a language we know to be undecidable to regular. So you have a few options to pick from from the notes for languages you're allowed to assume are undecidable. A good go-to is the language halts. You could use another language, but this is normally going to work out, so let's start with halts. So our reduction is going to show that halts reduces to regular. In other words, we want to create a decider Turing machine for halts using a decider Turing machine for regular. So let's get started on defining the decider Turing machine M halts. We know it's going to take in an input string, and based on the definition of halts, we can see the type of that string is going to be the encoding of a machine and its input. We also know that somewhere in the construction of this machine, we're going to be using the decider Turing machine mreg. So there's a few ways we could do this. It could be in a loop, in a conditional. But for this problem, and we'll see a common pattern, is that we'll often just return whatever that given decider Turing machine returns. Of course, we still have to give it an input. Looking at the type of the language regular, we know that its input is going to be the encoding of another Turing machine. So what Turing machine encodings could we pass into mreg? The only ones we have access to so far are our input Turing machine M. If we pass that in, we would be able to tell whether or not the language of M was regular, but that doesn't really answer the question of whether or not M on X actually halts. So this gives us a clue that we're probably going to want to define our own Turing machine to pass into mreg. Let's call this Turing machine M heart and its input string W. Now the question becomes, what goes on in the body of this Turing machine? Ultimately, our goal in creating this machine M heart is to ensure that it has a regular language if and only if MX halts. If that relationship isn't yet clear, it can sometimes help to jump ahead and look at the proof of correctness. Our proof of correctness is going to show that if MX is an element of halts, i.e. if M on X halts, then our constructed machine M halts should actually do what it's supposed to and accept. And if MX is not an element of halts, i.e. if MX loops forever, then our constructed machine should do as it's supposed to and reject. Let's try and fill in this proof with what we know so far in our construction. Well, we know that M halts accepts precisely when M reg accepts, because we just return whatever M reg returns. And similarly, it rejects when M reg rejects. Then, based on our knowledge that M reg is a decider Turing machine for the language regular, we know that M reg on M heart can only accept if the language of m heart is regular. And similarly, it only rejects when the language of m heart is not regular. Now the relationship should be pretty clear that we need to make sure that when mx halts, that the language of m heart is regular, and when mx loops forever, then the language of m heart is irregular. Now is a good moment to pause and try and come up with your own construction of what m heart should be doing to ensure that this relationship holds. Hopefully you've come up with some ideas of your own. Let's get to this solution. So in our definition of M heart, the first thing we're going to do is check our input string W. If W is of the form 0 to the n, 1 to the n for some n in the natural numbers, then we're immediately going to accept. Otherwise, if it's not of this form, we're going to run M on X and then accept. So let's see why this construction works. In the case that MX halts, then we know that both the if case and the else case of M heart will accept. In the if case, we immediately accept. In the else case, we run M on X, which we know halts, and then we reach accept. This means that M heart must accept everything. No matter what W string you pass in, it's always going to reach accept. 
This means that the language of M heart is sigma star, which we know is a regular language, so this proof checks out. Now to do the other side. In this case, we know that mx loops forever. This means that only the if case of m heart can accept. In the else case, we run mx, and this goes into a loop forever, and we never reach the accept line. That means that m heart only accepts strings that satisfy the if condition, only if they satisfy this condition and reach the accept line. This means that the language of m heart has to be equal to 0 to the n, 1 to the n for n in the natural numbers, because only strings that satisfy this condition accept. This we know from lecture is an irregular language, which completes the rest of this proof. So let's move on to Dolores. Dolores is the language of strings, which are encodings of a pair of Turing machines, such that there exists a string w from sigma star, such that both the first Turing machine and the second Turing machine accept on that input string w. So we want to show that this language Dolores is undecidable, and we're going to do this via a reduction. We can use the same reduction as last time and show that Halt reduces to Dolores. In other words, we can create a decider Turing machine M Halt using a decider Turing machine for Dolores. This is a good time to pause and try and complete this proof yourself using what we learned from the last problem. By now you should have come up with some ideas of your own, so let's go over the solution together. Our goal is to create a decider m halts. So we're going to define this machine, and as usual, it takes in the encoding of a Turing machine and its input. In our construction of m halts, we're going to define our own new Turing machine. Let's call it m hard again, and it takes in an input string w. Our construction of this machine is going to be to run m on x, this m and this x, and then accept. And at the very end, we are going to return m dol and give in as our two inputs m heart and m heart again. So now let's see why this construction works through our proof of correctness. So we've got two cases to show. First is if mx is an element of halts, i.e. mx halts, in which case we know that m heart is going to accept everything. This line right here is essentially just a no-op that does busy work, but we know that it'll always halt and will always reach the accept line. This means that there exists a string w that m heart accepts. In particular, all strings w it accepts. This means that mdol on m heart and m heart again has to accept because it satisfies this definition. And based on our definition, this means that m halt is going to accept as desired. So this side of the proof checks out. Now we have to show that if m hex is not an element of halts, that our machine rejects as desired. So this is the case when mx loops forever. In this case, whenever m heart is run, it gets stuck in this loop and never reaches the accept line. So in other words, m heart will never accept. This means that there doesn't exist any string w that it can accept, which means it doesn't satisfy the definition for Dolores when we run this line. So m Dolores is going to reject, and our machine will reject as desired. So there's a couple of things to note. The first is that we don't always need to check our input string when we're defining a Turing machine. In this case, we completely ignored whatever string w was, and that's totally okay. The second thing to note is that even though in the presentation of this problem, we just did the construction and it worked out perfectly, and then we did the proof of correctness for this side and the proof of correctness for this side, chances are the process is actually going to look more like the other problem when we did regular, where you start your construction, you might have to leave some parts empty and go to your proof of correctness, and maybe looking at your proof of correctness helps you realize something that'll help you tweak your construction, and you might have to go back and forth, but don't be disheartened. This struggle is just all part of the learning process, and the more you mess around with these machines and the more practice you get, the faster you'll be able to come up with these constructions.